Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today, inshallah, we will discuss the inguinal canal. Inguinal canal is an oblique intermuscular passage in the lower part of anterior abdominal wall, situated just above the medial half of the inguinal ligament. See here. This is the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall. This is anterior superior iliac spine. And here there is pubic tubercle. The inguinal ligament is attached to the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. This inguinal canal is just above the medial half of the inguinal ligament. It is about 4 cm long and it is directed. It is directed downwards, forwards and medially. It is 1.5 inches long. This inguinal canal extends from the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring. This is deep inguinal ring and this is superficial inguinal ring. See here in this diagram, this is anterior superior iliac spine. Here this is pubic tubercle. This is the inguinal ligament. This inguinal canal is above the medial half of the inguinal ligament. This is deep inguinal ring and here this is superficial inguinal ring. It is 4 cm long. Now what is deep inguinal ring? See here. These are the layers of the anterior abdominal wall. This is the outer one. This is external oblique muscle and external oblique aponeurosis. This is internal oblique muscle and internal oblique aponeurosis. This is transversus abdominis muscle and the fascia transversalis will be inside it. This is fascia transversalis. This is extraperitoneal connective tissue and this is parietal peritoneum. The deep inguinal ring is an oval opening. This oval is very important. This is oval, oval opening in the fascia transversalis. See here, this is fascia transversalis and this deep inguinal ring is present in the fascia transversalis. It is about 1.2 centimeters above the mid inguinal point. See here, what is mid inguinal point? Mid inguinal point is the point which is in between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis. So this is mid inguinal point. This deep inguinal ring is above the mid inguinal point. It is about 1.2 centimeters above the mid inguinal point. If this is mid inguinal point, so it will be 1.2 centimeters above and here there will be deep inguinal ring. And this deep inguinal ring is just lateral to the stem of the inferior epigastric vessel. This is inferior epigastric artery an inferior epigastric vein and this deep inguinal ring is just lateral to this inferior epigastric vessels. So what are the important points? Number one, this is an oval shape. It is present in the fascia transversalis. It is about 1.2 centimeters above the mid inguinal point and it is lateral to the inferior epigastric artery. It is lateral to the inferior epigastric artery. What is mid inguinal point? This can be asked in your viva. Mid inguinal point is the middle point between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis. The midpoint of the inguinal ligament is the middle point of the inguinal ligament, which is from the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle. See here in this diagram, here this is deep inguinal ring and this is superficial inguinal ring. This is inguinal canal. This is inguinal canal. Now where is the superficial inguinal ring? See here, this is the superficial inguinal ring. It is triangular in shape or it is a triangular gap in the external oblique aponeurosis. The deep inguinal ring was oval in shape and it was in the fascia transversalis. But the external uh, oblique aponeurosis is forming the superficial inguinal ring. We can see in this diagram also that this was external oblique muscle and external oblique aponeurosis. So the superficial inguinal ring is present in the external oblique aponeurosis. That's why it is named as superficial because this is this superficial inguinal ring is superficial or nearer to the skin as compared to the deep inguinal ring. It is deep 
or it is deep to the skin that's why it is named as deep inguinal ring and so this is oblique the internal the inguinal canal is not straight it is oblique the two openings are at different uh, different distance from the skin the superficial opening is superficial it is nearer to the skin and the deep one is deep it is far from the skin the superficial inguinal ring is triangular it is present in the external oblique aponeurosis it is shaped like an obtuse angle triangle see here this is the base of the triangle and these are the two limbs or the crura of the triangle the base of the triangle is formed by the pubic crest this is pubic crest it is forming the base of the triangle and the two sides of the triangle there is one lateral or lower side and there is one upper or medial side this one is upper or medial and this one is the lower or lateral margin of the superficial inguinal ring it is about 2.5 centimeters long and 1.2 centimeters broad at the base this breadth is about 1.2 centimeters these margins are referred as crura this is one crust and this is another crust at or beyond the apex of the triangle the two crura they are united by intercrural fibers here there are intercrural fibers so this is superficial inguinal ring what are the important points number 1 this is triangular gap number 2 it is present in the external oblique aponeurosis number 3 this triangle is obtuse angle triangle it has a base and two limbs the base is at the pubic crest and the two surfaces or two sides they are the upper or medial and the lower or lateral these are the two crura and they are united by the intercrural fibers see here in this diagram these are the layers this is external oblique muscle and aponeurosis this is internal oblique muscle and aponeurosis this is transversus abdominis muscle and this is fascia transversalis in the fascia transversalis there is deep inguinal ring and in the external oblique aponeurosis there is superficial inguinal ring this is external oblique aponeurosis and this is superficial inguinal ring so this is an oblique passage from the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring in this diagram also you can see the inguinal ligament which is attached from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle and this is the inguinal canal it is from the deep inguinal ring which is also called as internal inguinal ring and this is superficial inguinal ring which is also named as external inguinal ring and this is a passage which, which is from the internal inguinal ring to the external inguinal ring now what are the boundaries of the inguinal canal this is the most important question which can be asked in your exam so what are the boundaries first of all we will discuss the anterior wall of the inguinal canal see here this is the anterior wall because this is the inguinal canal and this is the anterior wall of the inguinal canal in the whole extent it is formed by the skin and the superficial fascia and the external oblique aponeurosis see here in this diagram this is external oblique aponeurosis which is forming the anterior wall of the inguinal canal but in the lateral one third if see if we see the lateral one third we can see that it is formed by the fleshy fibers of the internal oblique muscle see here this is internal oblique muscle which is forming the anterior wall in the lateral one third this lateral one third is important in the whole extent it is formed by the skin superficial fascia and the external oblique aponeurosis but the lateral one third it is formed by the muscle which is internal oblique muscle the posterior wall we can see here in the whole extent it is formed by the fascia transversalis the extra peritoneal tissue and the parietal peritoneum see here in this diagram this one is the fascia transversalis this is shown in white color then there is extra peritoneal tissue and then this is the parietal peritoneum so these are the layers which are present in the whole extent in the posterior wall but in the medial two third we can see here this is the medial two third there is the conjoint tendon see here this is the conjoint tendon which is formed by the internal oblique muscle and the transversus abdominis muscle so this is the conjoint tendon of the two muscles 
this conjoint tendon is forming the posterior wall in the medial two third and at its medial end there will be reflected part of the inguinal ligament also see here this is inguinal ligament and here there will be one reflected part also which is there called as the reflected part of the inguinal ligament so again the posterior wall is formed in the whole extent by three layers number one is the fascia transversalis then there is extra peritoneal connective tissue and then there is the parietal peritoneum and the medial two-third it is formed by the conjoint tendon and by the reflected part of the inguinal ligament see here in this diagram this is the inguinal canal, this is deep inguinal ring and here this is the superficial inguinal ring and this is inguinal canal. The interior wall it is formed by the, see here this is formed with by the external oblique aponeurosis but the lateral part will be formed by the internal oblique muscle. So there will be internal oblique muscle which is present here, this one is the internal oblique muscle. Okay, and this is external oblique aponeurosis. The posterior wall will be formed by the transversalis fascia. This is fascia transversalis and there will be extra peritoneal connective tissue on the inner side of the fascia transversalis and then there will be the parietal peritoneum on the inner side and medial two-third will be formed by this reflected part of the inguinal ligament and the conjoint tendon. See here, this is anterior wall and this is posterior wall. The anterior wall is weak in its medial part. See here, it is weak in its medial part as the lateral part is strengthened by the internal oblique muscle. The posterior wall is weak in its lateral part. See here, this is the lateral part because the medial part, it is strengthened by the conjoint tendon and the reflected part of the inguinal ligament. So, in the weaker parts, there are openings. See here, this is the deep inguinal ring which is present in the posterior wall in its lateral part. And the interior wall has the superficial inguinal ring in its medial part where they are weak. So, this is anterior wall, this is formed by the external oblique aponeurosis and the superficial inguinal ring is in the external oblique aponeurosis and this is the posterior wall and this is the deep inguinal ring and this posterior wall is formed by the fascia transversalis. So, the deep inguinal ring is an opening in the fascia transversalis. So, these are the structures or this is inguinal canal. See here, this is inguinal. So, the structures which will pass through the inguinal canal will come in the deep inguinal ring then they will pass through the inguinal canal and then they will exit through the superficial inguinal ring just like spermatic cord the spermatic cord enters the inguinal canal through the deep inguinal ring and it will crosses the inguinal canal and it will exit the inguinal canal through the superficial inguinal ring now the roof the roof of the inguinal canal is formed by the arched fibers of the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis muscle. See here, these are the fibers of the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis muscle. They are forming the roof of the inguinal canal. This part is very, very important that the roof is formed by the arched fibers of the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis muscle. Now the floor. The floor of the inguinal canal is formed by the grooved upper surface of the inguinal ligament. See here, this is the grooved upper surface of the inguinal ligament and at the medial end by the lacunar ligament. In the next diagram, I will show you the lacunar ligament. So the floor is formed by the inguinal ligament. This is also very important. The inguinal canal is larger in males than in the females. This is floor, this is inguinal ligament. Okay, here there will be roof which is formed by two muscles. This is internal oblique muscle and this is transversus abdominis muscle. This is external oblique muscle and aponeurosis which is forming the anterior wall and this is the posterior wall which is formed by the fascia transversalis. This is the deep inguinal ring and in the external oblique aponeurosis there will be superficial inguinal ring. So this will be the 4 centimeters uh, inguinal canal from the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring. All contents which are passing from in the inguinal canal will come from the deep inguinal ring and they will exit through the superficial inguinal ring. 
Now, what are the structures which are passing through the inguinal canal? Number one is the spermatic cord in males and the round ligament of uterus in females. They enter the inguinal canal through the deep inguinal ring and passes out through the superficial inguinal ring. Number two is ilioinguinal nerve. This is L1. It enters the inguinal canal through the interval between the external and internal oblique muscles and they pass out through the superficial inguinal ring outside the spermatic cord. See here in this diagram, this is the spermatic cord which is seen in men there is spermatic cord in the woman there is the round ligament of the uterus along with the spermatic cord there is ilioinguinal nerve which is passing through the inguinal canal and there is genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve which is also passing in the inguinal canal now the contents of the spermatic cord or the constituents of the spermatic cord because they will also be included in the contents of the inguinal canal because the spermatic cord is present in the inguinal canal and inside the spermatic cord there are many structures so number one there is spermatic cord number two there is alioinguinal nerve number three we can write these structures what are these structures number one vas deferens number two testicular and the cremasteric arteries and the artery of the vas deferens or the artery of the ductus deferens that is the testicular artery cremasteric artery and the artery of the vas deferens number three pempiform plexus of the veins number four lymph vessels from the testes number five genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve number six remains of the processus vaginalis so what you can write in the contents of the inguinal canal number one spermatic cord in males and the round ligament of the uterus in the female number two is the ilioinguinal nerve and number three all structures which are present inside the spermatic cord because the ilioinguinal nerve is present outside the spermatic cord so the structures which are present inside the spermatic cord they are ductus difference there are three arteries which are present number one is the testicular artery Number two is the cremasteric artery and number three is the artery of the ductus deferens. Then there are veins which are pempony form plexus of the veins which are draining the testes. Then the limb vessels from the testes and the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve. So these are the constituents. This question can also come in your exam. See here in this diagram, this is spermatic cord. These are the structures which are present inside the spermatic cord. Number one is the vas deferens. Then there is testicular artery. This is testicular artery, testicular vein which is forming the pampaniform plexus, artery of the vas deferens. Then there will be cremasteric artery. This is cremasteric artery and the vessels. Then there is genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve. So these are the structures which are present inside the spermatic cord. This is ilioinguinal nerve which is present outside the spermatic cord. These are the coverings which are the covering the spermatic cord. Number one, there is external spermatic fascia. See here in this diagram, this is external spermatic fascia. Then there will be cremasteric fascia and then there is internal spermatic fascia. The coverings of the spermatic cord will also come in your exam. So these are the structures which are present or crossing through the deep inguinal ring. This is vas deferens, artery of the vas deferens, testicular artery which is the branch of aorta, cremasteric artery which is the branch of the inferior epigastric artery, cremasteric vein which is draining in the inferior epigastric vein, testicular vein, then there is remains of the processus vaginalis, lymphatics, sympathetics. Then there is genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve which is L2. These are the structures which are coming from the deep inguinal ring and they are crossing through the superficial inguinal ring also. In the canal there are many coverings also. What are these coverings? These are three coverings which are covering the spermatic cord and along with these coverings there is ilioinguinal nerve also. Internal spermatic fascia is the inner covering of the spermatic cord. Then there is cremasteric fascia. Then there is external spermatic fascia. Outside the superficial inguinal ring, all these contents along with the external spermatic fascia from the external oblique aponeurosis. 
See here, in the canal, there will be internal spermatic fascia and the cremasteric fascia and the cremaster muscle. And outside the superficial inguinal ring, there will be external spermatic fascia. See here, this is the spermatic cord. There is testicular artery, testicular veins, vas deferens. This is pampliform plexus. Then this one is the spermatic cord. Then there is there are the coverings which are internal spermatic fascia. Then there is cremasteric fascia, and then there is external spermatic fascia. They are, these are the cremasteric vessels. Internal spermatic fascia is derived from the fascia transversalis because this is the innermost covering. Then the cremasteric fascia is covering the cremaster muscle. It is derived from the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis muscle. Outer covering which is external spermatic fascia is derived from the external oblique aponeurosis. These three sentences can come in your multiple choice questions. The internal spermatic fascia, it is derived from the fascia transversalis. The cremasteric fascia, it is derived from the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis muscle. And the external spermatic fascia is derived from the external oblique aponeurosis. See here in this diagram. This is the internal spermatic fascia. This one is the cremasteric fascia, cremaster muscle and the cremasteric fascia. And this is external spermatic fascia. This is spermatic cord. This is vas deferens. This is artery to the vas deferens. This is genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve, which is L2. This is testicular artery, which is the branch of aorta. This is pampiniform plexus of the veins. Again, you can see here, this is spermatic cord. This one is the internal spermatic fascia. This is cremasteric fascia and this is external spermatic fascia. The internal spermatic fascia is derived from the fascia transversalis. The cremasteric fascia, it is derived from the internal oblique muscle and the transversus abdominis muscle. And the external spermatic fascia, it is derived from the external oblique aponeurosis. Now we will discuss the mechanism of the inguinal canal that how the hernia is prevented what are the mechanisms or how the inguinal canal is formed so that the hernia can be prevented or hernia is not occurring very commonly because what are the mechanisms number one obliquity of the inguinal canal see here the inguinal canal is not a straight path it is oblique it is not the superficial inguinal ring and the deep inguinal ring they are not at the same level the two inguinal rings they do not lie opposite to each other therefore when the intra-abdominal pressure rises the anterior and the posterior walls of the canal they are approximated they will come closer to one another as soon as the intra-abdominal intra pressure increases these two walls will come closer and they will obliterate the passage they will obliterate the passage or they will make the passage narrower so that there will there will be no hernia this mechanism is named as flap valve mechanism flap valve mechanism it means that the deep inguinal ring and the superficial inguinal ring they are not opposite to one another they are at different levels so when the intra-abdominal pressure increases the anterior wall and the posterior wall they will come closer to one another in the anterior wall there is superficial inguinal ring and in the posterior wall there is deep inguinal ring so they will come closer to one another and they will narrow the inguinal canal this is named as flap valve mechanism Number two, the superficial inguinal ring is guarded against behind by the conjoint tendon and the reflected part of the inguinal ligament. So the superficial inguinal ring, it is present in the anterior wall. It, the anterior wall is weak medially. It is strengthened. The posterior wall is strengthened in the medial part that is by the conjoint tendon and the reflected part of the inguinal ligament and the deep inguinal ring is present in the posterior wall in the lateral area because in the medial part it is strengthened by the conjoint tendon and the reflected part of the inguinal ligament the anterior wall the superficial inguinal ring is present medially and laterally it is strengthened by the internal oblique muscle 
so the superficial inguinal ring is guarded behind by these two structures and the deep inguinal ring is guarded in front by the internal oblique muscle so these both weaklings or these both rings or openings they are strengthened anteriorly or posteriorly see here in this diagram this is deep inguinal ring it is present in the fascia transversalis and this is superficial inguinal ring it is present in the external oblique aponeurosis and this is the oblique or obliquity of the inguinal canal is visible here in this diagram now the shutter mechanism of the internal oblique see here the internal oblique is has a tri triple relation to the inguinal canal it is not only forming the anterior wall but it is also forming the roof and the posterior wall also so when it contracts the roof is approximated to the floor see here when it is contracted the roof the arched fibers of the internal oblique they are uh, approximated to the floor or come closer to the floor just like a shutter the arctic fibers of the transversus abdominis muscle also helps in the shutter mechanism so the shutter mechanism is done by the internal oblique muscle now the contraction of the cremaster muscle the cremaster muscle will help the spermatic cord to plug the superficial inguinal ring this is named as ball valve ball valve mechanism ball valve mechanism is because of the cremaster muscle see here when the cremaster muscle is contracted it will block the superficial inguinal ring by the spermatic cord in this diagram also you can see when the cremaster muscle is contracted the spermatic cord will block the superficial inguinal ring this is named as ball valve mechanism in this diagram it is also visible now the slit valve mechanism first of all we have discussed the flap valve mechanism then there was the ball valve mechanism now there is the slit valve mechanism what is slit valve mechanism see here this is superficial inguinal ring and the superficial inguinal ring is triangular shape there is one base and two sides this is upper or medial side and this is the lower or lateral side so what happens when the and the superficial inguinal ring is formed in the external oblique aponeurosis so when there is the contraction of the external oblique aponeurosis it will approximate the two crura or the two sides of the superficial inguinal ring see here this is the medial side and lateral side they will come closer to one another and they will close the superficial inguinal ring just like a slit so it will be and this slit mechanism it is increased by the intracrural fibers here there are there are intercrural fibers which are between two crura so this is slit valve mechanism so in this way the inguinal canal is closed so there can be no hernia hormones may also play a role in maintaining the tone of the inguinal musculature whenever there is rise in the intra abdominal pressure as in coughing sneezing or lifting heavy weights all these mechanisms come into play so that the inguinal canal is obliterated its openings are closed and the herniation of abdominal viscera is prevented so in an mcq what can come number 1 slit valve mechanism is because of the superficial inguinal ring medial margin and lateral margin the cremaster muscle will cause the ball valve mechanism the shutter mechanism is caused by the internal oblique muscle and the flip valve mechanism is caused by the uh, obliquity of the inguinal canal the deep inguinal ring is at a different level and the superficial inguinal ring is at a different level they do not lie opposite to one another so this is the mechanism of the inguinal canal i hope you understand the mechanism of the inguinal canal now i will describe some new terms what is sub inguinal space see here this blue or purple line which is showing the sub inguinal space it is between the hip bone posteriorly and the inguinal ligament anteriorly this sub inguinal space is allowing the passage of the femoral artery the femoral vein and there will be femoral nerve which is crossing on ilio sous muscle which is also passing see here this is iliacus muscle and this is sous muscle so the ilio sous muscle the femoral artery femoral vein femoral nerve all these are passing through this sub inguinal space 
This is named as subinguinal space. Now what is iliopubic tract? See here in this diagram, this is inguinal ligament. It is attached from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. And deep to the inguinal ligament, there is one tract which is named as iliopubic tract. This is also named as Thompson's tract. So this is extending from again from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. It is forming the flexor retinaculum of the hip joint. The iliopubic tract is a thickened inferior margin of the fascia transversalis. See here, this is the inferior thickened margin of the fascia transversalis and it is deep to the inguinal ligament. It is bridging the structures which are traversing the subinguinal space. So it will forming a bridge over the femoral artery, over the external iliac artery, over the iliosos muscle, the femoral vein, femoral nerve, genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve, the femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve, and the iliosos muscle. So this inguinal ligament and the iliopubic tract, they span an area of the innate weakness. There will be one area which is very, very weak in the inguinal region and that area is named as myopectineal orifice. The, this weak area in relation to the structures traversing the body wall, it is the site of the direct and indirect inguinal and the femoral hernia. Due to this iliopubic tract, you can differentiate between the inguinal and the femoral hernia. See here, there is ilio, this is inguinal ligament. Deep to the inguinal ligament, there is iliopubic tract. Most groin hernias in the male, they pass superior to the iliopubic tract, that is inguinal hernias, whereas the hernia which is coming inferior to the iliopubic tract, they will be femoral hernia. The inguinal hernia is more common in male and the femoral hernia is more common in female. Because of its relative weakness of this myopectineal orifice, it is laid with the prostatic mesh which is placed in the extra peritoneal retroinguinal space in many hernia repair. The extra peritoneal retroinguinal space is named as space of Bogros. In the space of Bogros, during herniorephy, the mesh is placed and mesh is placed in this myopectineal orifice or to cover this myopectineal orifice which is the area of weakness. The myopectineal orifice is bounded superiorly by the internal oblique muscle and the transversus abdominis muscle. See here, this blue area is the myopectineal orifice. This is inguinal ligament. There will be iliopubic tract deep to this inguinal ligament. These are the arching fibers of the internal oblique muscle and the transversus abdominis muscle which are forming the superior boundary. Inferiorly, there is superior border of the rumis, uh, the pubis. See here, this is superior pubic ramus. This is superior pubic ramus. Medially, there is rectus abdominis muscle. So this is rectus abdominis. This is myopectineal orifice. Here, from here, the hernia will come out or this is the area of weakness. If the hernia is coming out above the iliopubic tract, that can be vinyl hernia. And if it is coming below the iliopubic tract, that will be femoral hernia. Inguinal ligament, as we have discussed before, the inguinal ligament is a dense band. It is constituting the inferior most part of the external oblique aponeurosis. So it can come in your exam that the inguinal ligament is formed by the external oblique aponeurosis, just like the superficial inguinal ring, which is also formed by the external oblique aponeurosis. Now what is lacunar ligament? See here in this diagram, this is inguinal ligament. Some of the deeper fibers of the inguinal ligament, they are passing posteriorly to attach to the superior ramus of the pubis. This is superior pubic ramus. And this, these lacunar ligament fibers, they will be lateral to the pubic tubercle. These fibers which are coming from the inguinal ligament posteriorly and they are forming the arched fibers of the inguinal ligament which is also named as the ligament of Gimbernet and they are forming the medial boundary of the subinguinal space. This is subinguinal space. This is the medial boundary of the subinguinal space. This is inguinal ligament. These are the fibers which are coming from the inguinal ligament and arching posteriorly. These fibers are named as lacunar ligament. The the 
this is lacunar ligament the lateral fibers of the lacunar ligament continue to run along the pectin pubis as the pectineal ligament so this is pectineal ligament this is also named as the ligament of cooper so this is lacunar ligament this is inguinal ligament and this is pectineal ligament now what is reflected inguinal ligament see here in this diagram this is inguinal ligament and this is lacunar ligament and this is pectineal ligament pectineal or the ligament of the cooper now some of the most superior fibers of the lacunar ligament fan upward bypassing the pubic tubercle and crossing the linea alba to blend with the lower fibers of the contralateral external oblique aponeurosis these fibers form the reflected part of the inguinal ligament these fibers they are formed by the external oblique aponeurosis these fibers are coming from the medial upper or the medial margin of the superficial inguinal ring and they are crossing the linea alba and they will interact with the or blend with the contralateral reflected part of the inguinal ligament surface marking the inguinal canal is marked by two parallel lines see here we will draw two parallel lines which are 1 cm apart and about 3.7 cm long above the medial half of the inguinal ligament see here we will draw two lines above the medial half of the inguinal ligament these lines will be extending from the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring the deep inguinal ring which is marked 1.2 cm above the mid inguinal point and this will be an oval opening the superficial inguinal ring is marked immediately above the pubic tubercle as a triangle with its center 1 cm above and lateral to the pubic tubercle these are very important these measurements this is the deep inguinal ring is 1.2 cm above the mid inguinal point mid inguinal point is a median point which is in between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis and the superficial inguinal ring it is about 1 cm above and lateral to the pubic tubercle this above and lateral is very important now this is the summary the boundaries of the inguinal canal we can learn the posterior wall anterior wall roof and floor the posterior wall is formed by the transversalis fascia which is present in the whole or whole extent transversalis fascia is present in the whole extent but the medial part it is strengthened by the conjoint tendon and the reflected part of the inguinal ligament the anterior wall in the whole extent it is formed by the skin superficial fascia and the external oblique aponeurosis but laterally it is more strengthened by the internal oblique muscle the roof is formed by the arched fibers of the internal oblique and the transversalis fascia and the floor is formed mainly by the inguinal ligament deep to the inguinal ligament there is a tube pubic tract and medial the medial fibers of the inguinal ligament they are arched posteriorly to form the lacunar ligament so lacunar ligament and the inguinal ligament and the iliopubic tract they are forming the floor of the inguinal canal i hope you understand the inguinal canal thank you very much